am Sophia, you're watching Paralego, and in this video you can find out how you can make a slanting waistcoat stitch crochet around that. Stay tuned! Supplies list 900 grams of thick t-shirt yarn, crochet hook size 6 and 8 millimeters, a zipper, some lining fabric, needles and thread for sewing, a darning needle, two o-rings with an inward opening, a metal chain shoulder strap, and a pair of scissors. Start with a magic circle using your 8 mm hook. Wrap the yarn twice around your fingers. Grab the back strand and pull a loop through the front. Yarn over and chain 1. Place 6 single crochet into the circle. Insert your hook into the circle. Yarn over, pull a loop. Yarn over again and pull through both loops on your hook. Repeat 5 more times. Pull the tail to close the ring tight. Release your hook and insert into the first stitch of the round from the back side of your work. Insert your hook into your open loop and draw the loop in. Loosen your open loop and pull your entire work through. Pull your yarn to close the loop. At this point, you don't need your join to be too tight. You need to be able to insert your hook into that join stitch. And that's what you're going to do next. So insert your hook into the join stitch under both loops, yarn over, pull a loop, and chain one. To start the second round, place a single crochet into the next stitch. Now go back and insert your hook under the chain in here. Yarn over, pull a long loop, yarn over again and pull through both loops on your hook. That was a slanting waistcoat stitch. In essence, you place two new stitches into one. Now place a single crochet into the next stitch. Next, insert your hook into the post of the previous stitch of the first round, here, into the V where we place a normal waistcoat stitch. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull a long loop. Yarn over again and pull through both loops on your hook. And that was a more proper slanting waistcoat stitch. Place a single crochet into the next stitch and a slanting waistcoat stitch into the post of the previous stitch of the first round. Now 
Repeat those two stitches until the end of the round. Now by counting the stitches you will realize that you double them and you end your second round with 12 stitches. Pull the tail to close your center if you must. Release your hook and insert into the first stitch of the round from the back side of your work. Insert your hook into your open loop and draw it in. Loosen your open loop and pull your entire work through. Pull your yarn to close the loop. And let's move on to the third round. Insert your hook into the join stitch. Yarn over, pull a loop and chain one. Place a single crochet into the next stitch. Now go back and insert your hook into the post of the chain of the previous round and place a slanting waistcoat stitch. From now on you will repeat the pattern of the second round, with the only difference that half the posts you'll place your slanting waistcoat stitches are hidden under slanting waistcoat stitches. So the single crochet goes up into the stitch and this is where you'll place your slanting waistcoat stitch, entering with a slope to the left. Let's begin. First a single crochet. And now a slanting waistcoat stitch in here, into the post of the previous stitch of the second round. That was hidden by the close by slanting waistcoat stitch. Again, place a single crochet into the next stitch. And now insert your hook into the post of the previous slanting waistcoat stitch of the previous round and place a new slanting waistcoat stitch. Let's watch it again. A single crochet into the next stitch Uncover the post of the previous stitch of the previous round and place a slanting waistcoat stitch. That's a big name for a stitch, isn't it? A single crochet into the next stitch. and a slanting waistcoat stitch into the post of the previous slanting waistcoat stitch of the previous round. Repeat those four stitches until the end of the round.
finishing the third round last couple of stitches release your hook and insert into the first stitch of the round from the back side of your work insert your hook into the open loop and draw it in. Loosen your open loop and pull your entire work through. And pull your yarn to close the loop. And we are ready for the fourth round. Insert your hook into the joint stitch, yarn over, pull a loop and chain one. Place a single crochet into the next stitch. Now go two rows down and insert your hook into the previous slanting waistcoat stitch of the second round, right into the post, and place a new slanting waistcoat stitch but try not to make it too long. The rest of the fourth round is a repeat of the third. Place a single crochet into the next stitch, then a slanting waistcoat stitch into the hidden post of the previous stitch, Again, a single crochet into the next stitch and a slanting waistcoat stitch into the post of the previous slanting waistcoat stitch of the third round. Repeat those four stitches until the end of the round. Two more stitches to finish the fourth round. Now you'll notice that your project started being wavy because we doubled our stitches three times. So from now on we stop increasing and your work will start to gradually straighten and curve towards the center. Next release your hook and insert into the first stitch of the round from the back side of your work. Insert your hook into your open loop and draw it in. Loosen your open loop and pull your entire work through. Pull your yarn to close the loop, but this time really tight. Insert your hook into the stitch after the join, right here. Yarn over, pull a loop and chain one. 
Now, in order to stop increasing, skip the next stitch and insert your hook into the following. Place a single crochet. Now go back into the slanting waistcoat stitch of the previous round and place a new slanting waistcoat stitch into its post. Let's watch it again. A single crochet into the next but one stitch. And a slanting waistcoat stitch into the previous slanting waistcoat stitch. Right into the post. This is the pattern you will repeat until the end of the round. Finishing the fifth round, we completed the 46th stitch and now you will place the 47th, which will be a single crochet, into the same stitch you placed your chain, right here. And one final waistcoat stitch into the final waistcoat stitch of the previous round. Now, you'll notice that your work continues to be wavy, but it will straighten as you work the two following rounds, trust me. To complete the fifth round, release your hook, insert into the first stitch of the round from the back side of your work, insert your hook into your open loop and draw it in. Loosen your open loop and pull your entire work through. And pull your yarn to close the loop very tight. The next three rounds are a repeat of the fifth. Insert your hook into the stitch neck. Place your chain into the stitch that follows the join. Place a single crochet into the next but one stitch. And place a slanting waistcoat stitch into the previous slanting waistcoat stitch, right into its post. And so on and so on until the 47th stitch. That you will place into the same stitch you place your chain. A final slanting waistcoat stitch into the previous slanting waistcoat stitch of the previous round. And as you can see, the wave started to disappear. And the usual join to complete the round. Repeat the same process until you complete the eighth round. This is the end of the eighth round. Place the final single crochet 
into the same stitch you place the chain and place one final slanting waistcoat stitch into the final slanting waistcoat stitch of the previous round. And make your join as usual. Finally, insert your hook into the space under your join, yarn over, pull a long loop, insert your hook into the stitch next to your join, here, yarn over, pull a loop, and slip stitch. Insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull a loop, and slip stitch. Repeat into the next stitch. Continue like this until the end of the round. When you reach the last stitch, cut your yarn, fasten off, insert your 6 mm hook into the first stitch of the round, Grab the yarn and pull it down. Insert your hook into the last stitch of the round, back loop only, from the reverse side. Grab the tail and draw the yarn up. Draw the tail to the inside of your work and weave it in the reverse side of the stitches with your darning needle. Cut the excess and here's the first half of the bag. Make an exact copy but leave a tail of at least one meter long.
Thread the tail to your darning needle. And bring the lips of the two halves together. Insert the needle into the closest slip stitch of the opposite half and bring the yarn up. Insert into the next slip stitch of the same half. and the corresponding slip stitch of the opposite half and bring the yarn down. Insert into the next slip stitch of the same half and the corresponding slip stitch of the opposite half and bring the yarn up. Again insert into the next slip stitch of the same half and the corresponding slip stitch of the opposite half and bring the yarn down. Continue sewing the two halves together in this meandering manner for 24 slip stitches. In the end, cut the excess leaving a short tail and use the darning needle to weave it in the reverse side of the stitches at the inside of the bag. And it's time to attach the zipper or attach the zipper to your lining and sew them together to your bag as I will do. I will not demonstrate how to make a lining because my sewing skills are really poor. I'm just showing you to get an idea of how it can be done. In any case, whether you attach just the zipper or a zipper and a lining together, make sure to use a curved needle. It will make your life much easier.
the zipper is in place and to finish the bag we'll move on to the strap. Bring your chain and your 6mm hook and make a slip knot. Release your hook and insert into the first metal chain. Draw your open loop in and chain 2. Insert your hook into the next metal chain and place a single crochet. Make sure to carry the tail. Insert your hook into the previous chain, yarn over, draw a long loop Yarn over again and pull through both loops on your hook. That was a cross single crochet. Skip one metal chain and place a single crochet into the next one. Insert your hook into the skipped chain and place a cross single crochet. Repeat the last two stitches. Continue like this until the end of the metal chain. Finally, cut your yarn, fasten off, and use your darning needle to weave in the tail at the back side of the strap.
Last but not least, attach the O-rings to the ends of your strap. Make sure to insert into the first or last stitch and the metal chain. Finally, attach the strap to the bag by inserting each o-ring into two stitches at the ends of the zipper. And it's ready! My beloved viewers, thank you so much for staying. If you like what you watch, give us a thumbs up, make a comment and share. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and click on the bell to get notified for new videos. And don't forget to visit Paralego.com. Until next time, take care. Mwah.